I remember receiving flack in, in years past from different people who were close to me about going to church service and leaving a family function in order to go to church on Christmas. And to me, it just it boggles my mind because the people who give me our time are Christian. And they, and they claim, you know, it's like, we're celebrating Christmas. It's like, well, why, why are you going to give me a hard time about going to church to celebrate then? I mean, look, I love my family and I love the fact that everybody gets together and I like spending time with people. And I think that's important, too. When you celebrate Christmas, you could celebrate with your family and stuff. But what are you celebrating? I'm not celebrating the fact that I have family. I'm celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. That's more important to me. And you know what? There is another family outside of my physical flesh and blood. We have a spiritual family in the house of God my brothers and sisters in Christ, that, you know what? What a great place to be able to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So with all the commercialism and all these other things that can get people distracted from, I want to take time. I have five points tonight on things that um, when, when I was just, just meditating on the birth of Christ and kind of trying to put myself there and thinking about it, five different things that we ought to be able to not just recognize and honor, but also have in our hearts and our spirit during this time. If you're going to be in the spirit of Christmas, you know, don't allow yourself to, to get in your flesh and start having all this, you know, covetousness and bitterness and wrath and fighting. And, so, and look, let's face it, a lot of that stuff happens during the holidays, right? People are on edge and there's often a lot of fights and arguments and stuff. Let's take a step back, and I know it's the evening of Christmas already, but it's not over yet, and, and let's carry this through, not just today, let's carry it through in our lives. But I want to, you know, the, the number one thing, when, I, when I'm preaching on the meaning of Christmas, look down at verse number 11, the number one thing is the Savior is born. That's, a, that's the, the primary uh, reason that, that all of these other things I'm going to talk about is it revolves around the fact that a savior is born. This isn't just a man. This isn't just a great teacher. This isn't just a great prophet. A savior is born. Verse number 11 says, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a savior, which is Christ the Lord. This is a monumentous event. This is a once-in-a-lifetime event, once-in-a-eternity once in event of Jesus Christ coming into this world. It has been the plan of salvation that God had from eternity past for us, knowing the beginning from the end. However, this event is critical and pivotal for, for all of us as a human race. We are in need of a Savior. We've always needed a Savior. Sinful man needs a Savior, and this is the day that he came into this world. What a day! And and. We recognize that even with our years. We're in the year 2019 A.D. A.D. means Anno Domini. It's the year of our Lord. The year of our Lord, 2019. It is that monumentous to change the way you record time by saying, hey, it's been 2019 years since Christ was born. That's very, very important. Now, um, jump down to verse number 26. I just want to show you here another point before I really start getting into my main points. The Bible says, and, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death. So this is, this is when they bring the child in to the temple. And there's a man here that actually had the Holy Ghost revealed. He's an old, he's an aged man, he's an old man. And the Holy Ghost revealed unto him that he wasn't going to die until he'd seen the Christ, until he's seen the Messiah in the flesh. So it says here, it's revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Verse 27, and he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now lettest thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. Your salvation for us, I've seen it. 
I've seen it with my own eyes. And just think about being in that situation alone as this man seeing a baby, right? Who else can you turn to? What prophet or what man are you going to turn to and look and say, my salvation and it rests in just, in just this newborn, newborn little baby that can't do anything that, you know, that, that needs to be cared for and, and raised and, and fed and everything else. And that's my salvation right there. 